the building we're sitting in is the 1861 school, and this was the third school that was built in the settlement, and probably one of the only schools that's remaining in Canada that was built by that first generation removed from slavery that's still existing as a school. There were grades one to 10 that were taught here, and then one to nine, and then one to eight. So there were 100 students in this one room with one teacher at one time. And so the, the Buxton schools did produce some uh, wonderful people throughout history. Anderson Abbott was the first black Canadian doctor. He was educated here in Buxton, then eventually was a soldier in the Civil War, uh, but one of, was one of the founders of the Freedmen's Hospital, which is now Howard University. The first black teacher here was the first black congressman in the state of Alabama and editors of race relation newspapers that were educated in Buxton but went back to the United States. So education was very, very important. And the road out front, which runs through the settlement, it was named after Abraham Dora Shad, who was Marianne Shad Carey's dad. Uh, Abraham Dora Shad, he was very involved in the Underground Railroad movement. Uh, he was president of the National um, Colored Convention in Philadelphia prior to moving up here to Canada West. And he was also president of the Colored Conventions here in Canada. Uh, but he was also one of Canada's first five black men elected to any political office in Canada. Uh, he was our local township Reeve uh, in 1858, and he was eventually put on a stamp to commemorate that. So Marianne, who was his eldest of 13 children, uh, was a very strong-willed visionary, if you will. She was you know, the first black woman not only woman, but the first black woman to own an operator newspaper, uh, you know, in North America, the Provincial Freeman. And Frederick Douglass was one of the first people who really took note of Marianne, and she started writing articles in his newspaper, The North Star. But the fact that she went to Howard University, um, and Howard was an all-black male university at one time, but they wouldn't allow her to write her law degree until she was in her 60s, got her degree and sued the university for sex discrimination. And number one, you go girl. Um, that is just, you know, when you stop and think of back in the 1860s and here she is, you know, writing a degree and still uh, going strong. She was encouraged by Martin Delaney to recruit in the Civil War, number one. It's very unusual for female recruiters. And uh, Martin Delaney, you know, thought so highly of her that he encouraged her. So she was a recruiter in the state of Indiana. Well, I guess one of the most admirable things to me, she organized a group of women, and it was called the Colored Women's Progressive Franchise Organization that enabled black women to invest their money and buy stocks and bonds so they would not become financially dependent on men. And to me, you know, that was just amazing to have the foresight and the fortitude to do something like that, um, to prepare women um, for what might happen. You know, you need to get set in case something happens to your husband, but you need to be able to stand on your own two feet. To me, she was one of those very unique people and very intriguing. Um, you know, she was frank and she was determined. She was tenacious and she was viewed then as someone to be reckoned with, I think. And if she was a, a man, she probably would have been fighting in Harper's Ferry with, um, with John Brown because she had that, that kind of um, determination. I sometimes compare her to Angela Davis. She was the Angela D Davis in the 1800s. She left her mark and I think, you know, Angela and others picked up where she had left off. She happens to be my great, great, great aunt, actually. My husband tells me occasionally that I have some of those, <laughs> those shad traits that come through sometimes. <laughs> And I think it's because she was very strong-willed, and he he reminds me, yep, there's that, there's that Marianne, yeah, yeah. And I can see some of those traits in our daughters as well. Um, it's a strong gene, but it's not a bad gene, you know. Especially during these, during what's happening today, it's not as not a bad gene at all. <laughs>